the Babylonian method, a solved problem on converging sequences. In this video, we consider the sequence determined by the recursive rule xn plus 1 is 1 half times xn plus 2 divided by xn. It turns out that this sequence converges, assuming that x1 is chosen in a suitable way. This sequence was known already to the Babylonians, who used it uh, 1600 BC to compute numerical approximations of square root of 2. We start with a review of the relevant theory. We consider a sequence a n and we say that it converges to a finite number l if the numbers a n get arbitrarily close to the number l as the index n grows. This is the heuristic not so precise definition of convergence of a sequence. More precisely, we say that a sequence converges and a finite number L is the limit of the sequence A1, A2, A3 and so forth if for all positive numbers epsilon there is always a index N sub epsilon such that whenever N is larger than N epsilon then the absolute value of A N minus L is less than epsilon. If uh, this condition is satisfied for all positive numbers epsilon then this finite number L is the limit of the sequence. This condition simply says that the numbers A n get arbitrarily close to L as n grows. Notation for the limit of a sequence is lim A n as n approaches infinity equals in this case capital case L. Let A n and B n be two sequences which have finite limits a and b respectively. Then we may consider the sum of the sequences a n and b n, that is the sequence formed by the numbers a n plus b n. The limit of this sum of the sequences is the sum of the limits of the sequences, that is limit as n goes to the infinity a n plus b n is a plus b. Likewise, the limit of the product of sequences is the product of the limit. That is limit as n goes to the infinity a n times b n is a times b. And limit as n goes to the infinity a n divided by b n is a divided by b assuming that b is different from zero. These are properties of limits which we will use just in a moment. We say that a sequence a1, a2, a3 and so forth is increasing if a n is always at most a n plus 1 for all n. If a n is strictly less than a n plus 1 for all n, then we say that this sequence is strictly increasing. Likewise, the sequence a1, a2, a3 and so forth is decreasing if a n plus 1 is always at most a n for all n. And again here we may speak about strictly decreasing sequences. They are sequences for which a n plus 1 is always strictly less than a n for all n. We define monotonic sequences as sequences which are either increasing or decreasing. And then we say that a sequence a1, a2, a3 and so forth is bounded if there are numbers capital case M and small case M such that small case M is at most a n is at most capital case M for all n. An important consequence of the completeness of the set of real numbers is that a bounded monotonic sequence always has a finite limit. We will use this result just in a moment. We fix a number a which is larger than 1. We define the sequence xn by setting x1 equals a and xn plus 1 equals 1 half times xn plus a divided by xn. 
The question is, does this sequence converge? If it does, determine its limit. And we have to justify our answer. So the sequence is uh, defined in terms of a fixed number a, which is greater than 1, x1 equals a, and xn plus 1 is 1 half xn plus a divided by xn. We have to figure out whether this converges, and if it does, uh, we have to find its limit. So we first observe that xn plus 1 minus square root of a is 1 half times xn plus a divided by xn minus square root of a by the definition of xn plus 1. The quantity on the right hand side of this equation simplifies to 1 half times xn squared minus 2 times square root of a xn plus a and that divided by xn. We observe that the numerator xn squared minus 2 times square root of a times xn plus a is a perfect square. Therefore, this gets the form xn minus square root of a and that difference squared divided by 2 times xn. Now, xn minus square root of a squared is always non-negative. It is positive unless xn equals square root of a, in which case it is zero. If now also the denominator 2 times xn is positive, then we can conclude that the whole expression is non-negative, and this assuming that xn is positive. So we conclude that if xn is positive, then xn plus 1 minus square root of a is non-negative. This means that xn is greater than or equal to square root of a. If that is true, then also xn plus 1 is greater than or equal to square root of a. Now x1 was a. a was assumed to be larger than 1. Therefore, a is larger than square root of a. So certainly x1 is larger than or equal to square root of a. Therefore, also x2 is larger than or equal to square root of a, and inductively all numbers xn plus 1, they are larger than or equal to square root of a. Important property which we will use just in a moment. Next, we wish to figure out whether the sequence xn is monotonous or not. To that end, we consider the difference xn plus 1 minus xn. By the definition of xn plus 1, it is 1 half times xn plus a divided by xn minus xn. This expression simplifies to xn squared plus a minus 2 times xn squared and that quantity divided by 2 times xn. Here xn squared minus 2 times xn squared is simply negative xn squared, so we get that this is a minus xn squared and that quantity divided by 2 times xn. And now, if xn squared is larger than or equal to a, this is less than or equal to 0. So if xn is larger than or equal to a, then xn plus 1 minus xn is at most 0. Next we conclude, since a was larger than 1, a is certainly larger than square root of a. This means that x1 is larger than square root of a. Just a moment ago, we showed that uh, if xn is larger than or equal to square root of a, then also xn plus 1 is larger than or equal to square root of a. This is the induction step. The fact that x1 is larger than square root of a, and the second step that if xn is larger than or equal to square root of a, then xn plus 1 is also larger than or equal to square root of a, implies that all quantities xk are larger than or equal to square root of k. So this means that the sequence xn is bounded from below by the number square root of a. So now xn plus 1 minus xn is a minus xn squared and that quantity divided by 2 times xn. And since we now know that 
each xn is larger than or equal to square root of a, it means that a minus xn squared is always less than or equal to zero. And this means that the sequence xn is monotonically decreasing. We conclude that the sequence xn is monotonically decreasing and bounded from below by the number square root of a. Since it is monotonically decreasing and bounded from below, then it is also bounded from the above because x1 is the largest one of all these numbers xn. So we conclude that the sequence xn is monotonic and bounded. Therefore, it has a limit. So the limit as n goes to the infinity xn exists. And furthermore, we know that the limit is at least square root of a because the whole sequence is bounded from below by square root of a. Our final step is to compute the limit. So we have to compute the limit s of the sequence xn as n goes to the infinity. As n goes to the infinity, of course also n plus 1 goes to the infinity, so limit of xn is the same as limit of xn plus 1. But xn plus 1 is 1 half xn plus a divided by xn. So we conclude that limit of xn is limit of 1 half xn plus a divided by xn. Now by the properties of the limit, this is 1 half of limit of xn plus a divided by the limit of xn. Therefore, we conclude that the limit of xn, which was denoted by s, is 1 half s plus a divided by s. So here we have an equation, s equals 1 half times s plus a divided by s. We can easily solve s out of this equation, because it simplifies to 2 times s squared equals s squared plus a, therefore s squared is a, and this means that s is either plus square root of a or minus square root of a. But since we know that s is at least square root of a, it cannot be negative of square root of a. So the conclusion is that the limit s is square root of a. So we have shown that the sequence xn converges and that its limit is square root of a. As an example of the use of this sequence, let us consider the situation where a is 2, x1 is 2, and x1 n plus 1 is always 1 half xn plus 2 divided by xn. According to the result just obtained, this sequence converges and its limit is square root of 2. So x1 is 2. x2 is uh, just uh, 3 over 2, obtained by substituting 2 in place of xn in this formula xn plus 1 equals 1 half xn plus a divided by xn. x3 is approximately 1.4166666667. x4 is approximately 1.4142156866. And x5 is approximately 1.4142135622. And this is the 10-digit approximation of square root of 2. So x5 gives already a very good approximation of square root of 2. This method was apparently known to the Babylonians. Here is a photograph taken by Bill Castleman of a Babylonian clay tablet dated to 1800 or 1600 BC. The diagonal displays an approximation of square root of 2, which apparently was computed numerically using the method just explained. This was a lot earlier than Pythagoras, who considered square root of 2 and whose student then found out that square root of 2 is not a rational number. So Babylonians, almost 4,000 years ago, were already quite advanced in their mathematics. 